welcome back to BeHookedCrochet.com. I'm your host, Brittany, and in this episode, I'm going to teach you how to crochet a pair of yoga socks. Now, we're going to be using Mary Maxim Tropical Breeze Sock Yarn, and I'm going to be using the colorway called Puddle Jumper. You can pick whichever colorway you, you prefer. You're also going to need a size 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. Now, if you don't have that particular size in your set, Find the closest one that you can. If you have a three millimeter or a three and a half, those will also work. So the way that we're going to work our yoga socks is bottom up. So we're gonna start near the toe and we're gonna work all the way up to the top. I'll also note that depending on the size of your foot, you may have to make some adjustments to what we'll be talking about here in the video tutorial. And I'll also let you know which sections you'll need to make adjustments in order to fit your foot. Now I personally wear about a size seven and these fit me just fine. So if you wear a size seven shoe, I think you'll find that these will fit you just fine. If your foot is a little bigger or a little smaller, you'll just want to pay close attention to the sections where I talk about how to adjust the sizing. So the first thing that we want to do is start off by creating a slip knot. And then we want to chain 48. Now this is one of those parts where you may want to make some adjustments to fit your foot. As I mentioned, we're starting with the bottom of the yoga sock. So this is going to go around the middle part of your foot. So just back behind your toes. And you want to create a chain that fits comfortably around your foot. Now it is going to shrink up just slightly because of the stitch that we're using is kind of a ribbing. So it will have some stretch to it, but it will also shrink just slightly compared to the size of your foundation chain. So start off with 48 chains. Wrap that around your foot just above your toes and make sure that it fits you the way that you like. And then you can make adjustments accordingly. Now we're not working in a specific multiple for this. So you can add chains or subtract chains however you wish. You don't have to worry about staying within an even number or anything like that. Now once you have your chain of 48 or whichever size fits comfortably around your foot, now we're going to join with a slip stitch to our first chain. And the first thing that we need to do is make sure this chain isn't twisted. And once you have it all stretched out, it's not twisted, then you can just loop it around and insert your hook into that first chain. Then just leave that there, pick up your working yarn and make a slip stitch. So just yarn over and pull through both of those loops. Now for our first round, what we're going to do is chain two and we're not actually counting this as a stitch. We're just allowing it to bring us up to the proper height. We're going to be working in double crochet stitches and we're going to be doing so in a spiral fashion. So we'll talk about what that means as we finish up this round. But for now, what we need to do is make one double crochet into every single chain. So once you've made one double crochet into every single chain, we're going to proceed with the next round by working in a spiral fashion. And what that means is that we're not going to join with the slip stitch to this chain that we started at the very beginning. We're just going to jump right into the next row. And this makes things a lot easier for us to work in the round because we don't really have to keep track of each round and we also aren't going to have an unattractive seam from where we've joined every single round. So the part that you're looking at right here, this is going to be the top part of our yoga sock. So this is gonna be on the top of your foot. 
So now we're going to be working with front post double crochet stitches and I will demonstrate how to do that. We're just going to yarn over like we normally would. We're going to ignore this chain two and we just want to find that first double crochet and just stick your hook just behind the post. So in one side and out the other and then work your double crochet as normal. Now this first row is going to be a lot slower and a little bit more fiddly than once you get a good foundation of your post stitches. And that's all we want to do for this round. Now before we move on any further, it's always a good idea to mark your first stitch with a stitch marker whenever you're working in a spiral. So just so you know where the start of your round actually begins. You can tell a little bit by your tail, but it's also a good idea to just use a stitch marker to help you out. So what we need to do is just finish up this round where we're doing front post double crochet stitches. And we're gonna do that for every single stitch. So once you've made it all the way around to your second round here, your little sock should look something like this. The next thing that we want to do is just continue this pattern for a little bit of length of the sock. So we're basically going to be working, I said this part is going to be where your toes are. And we just want to make it long enough so that it comes up to the top where our heel would be. So we're going to work just a little tube and then we're going to start forming the heel, or the lack of a heel in this case. So here is another part where if you're changing sizes you're going to need to make some adjustments. If you're working on the same size as me for about a size 7 foot, you're going to work 12 total rounds. So we have two here, so you would add 10 more rounds just like we did one front post double crochet into every single stitch and then using your stitch marker to help you count the rows as you go. Now if you're making a bigger or a smaller sock, you're going to need to adjust this length. So smaller sock, obviously you're going to make it shorter. A bigger sock, you're going to make it a little bit longer. Now if you're making these for yourself, it's really simple. You're just going to try it on as you add the rows and then that'll tell you where you need to go from there. If you're making these for a recipient, it might be good if you can somehow get one of their regular socks that fits their foot or if you could just simply ask them for some measurements or if it's not a gift you could just try it on as you work these socks. So to get you started on the next round you'll just release your stitch marker and since we're working in a spiral we're just going to continue by making a front post double crochet in that next stitch. Now one thing you do want to look out for is you want to make sure you're inserting your hook in the right place. So you want to go more towards the top. So you're inserting it in that last post that you created. Now you can insert your hook in the post below and you don't want to do that because that's going to it's going to make your stitch shorter and start from there and it's it's going to cover up this stitch rather than add to it. So it's going to throw off your pattern. So you'll yarn over, insert it in that top post, and then just work your double crochet. And then don't forget your stitch marker. So I am now working on my third round. And I'm just going to go until I've reached round 12. So go ahead and do that. Finish up the length of your sock based on the sizing that you're working on and come back to this video and then we'll start talking about how to work with the the slight increase that we're going to experience when you're working with that part of your foot you know your foot gets a little bit wider and then we're going to talk about how to work 
these heels. It's actually a lot easier than what you might think. Okay, so what I have done off camera is crocheted up my first 12 rows, just working in that front post double crochet pattern. The idea is that we want this to be sort of in the middle of the foot, and that's where we're gonna add a few stitches to account for just the extra circumference in that part of our foot. So the next three rounds, we're going to add one stitch on each round. So we're gonna increase on the first stitch of the next three rounds. So the pattern itself is the same. We're gonna work in front post double crochets, and we're gonna put our increase in the very first stitch. So for me, I'm starting on round 13. For you, it could be different depending on your size. But the part that isn't going to matter is where you're gonna put this increase. No matter how many rounds you've worked up to this point, you're gonna increase on the very first stitch. We're gonna do that by making a front post double crochet in that first stitch. And then again in the same place. Now I would go ahead and place your stitch marker again on that first stitch just so you know where to stop. And from this point finish up this round by making one front post double crochet around every single stitch. And once you've made it to the end of that round we're going to repeat that two more times. So you want to have a total of three rounds where we just increase on that first stitch. So we're going to do that again. Find your very first stitch, and this one might be a little bit more difficult to locate because we have two stitches in one. But you'll make your front post double crochet around that first stitch, and then you can go ahead and mark that. and make one more front post double crochet around that same post. So there we just have one increase. And then finish up the round by making one front post double crochet in each of the remaining stitches. And once you've made it around to the very end of that round, we're just gonna repeat that one more time. So again, we have a total of three rounds where we're increasing on the first stitch. Now you can see my increase right here. We'll just make a front post double crochet around that first stitch. and increase by making a front post double crochet in the same place. Now we'll just continue by making one front post double crochet around each stitch in the remainder of this round. So off camera, I finished up that third round where we added the increase at the very beginning. So you can see right here just where I have my three increases. And now we're ready to move on to the next part. So we're not quite ready for the heel. We need a little bit more length at this point. And so what we want to do is crochet three more rounds where we're not increasing. So just make one front post double crochet around every single stitch for three more rounds. Okay, so this doesn't matter which size you're working on, we're going to crochet three more rounds where we are not increasing. Okay, so go ahead and finish that up, come back to the video, and then we'll be ready to start talking about the heel. So if you're following along with the exact sizing that I'm working with here, we've just finished up round 18. So we did our three rows 
our three rounds where we were no longer increasing and you can kind of see the shape that's taking form as a result of that. And now we're ready to begin our heel and it's it's very simple actually for us to create this because we're not forming the heel but we're really just creating an opening for our heel to come through. That's what's cool about learning how to crochet socks by starting out with something like this, a yoga sock, because it leaves out those difficult elements where the toe and the heel. So the hard part is going to be if you're working on a different size than what I am here. The best way to figure out where to place your heel is just to lay it down flat just like this and then take a stitch marker and mark the two stitches that are at each corner. So I would mark this stitch right here and this stitch right here. That's going to serve as my visual cue. So I'm going to have a solid row of front post double crochet on the top side because this is the top part of the sock and then I would create a chain that's equivalent to the same number of stitches that I skipped. So from this stitch marker to this stitch marker. Now for those of you who are working right along with me, what we want to do is make a front post double crochet into the first 15 stitches. And I'm going to continue to use my stitch marker just because it makes it easy for me to know where the beginning of each round is. So that was my first and I want a total of 15 for this size here. So I now have my 15 stitches, or if you're working in the different size, you would just work to where you put your stitch marker. Then we're going to chain 21. And then we're going to skip 21 stitches. Or again, if you're working on a different size, you'll skip the same number of stitches until you reach your stitch marker over on the other side. And the number of stitches you skip needs to be the same number of chains that you made. Now once you locate the last stitch that you need to skip, in our case here it's this 21st stitch, then we're going to make a front post double crochet into that 22nd stitch. And then you'll simply finish by making a front post double crochet in each of your remaining stitches until you get to your stitch marker. So when you've made it back around, you, your sock should look something like this. We have our chain opening here and our heel is going to go just right in there. So now we're going to pick back up just on our similar repeat than what we've been working this whole time. We just want to make one front post double crochet around every stitch and the only thing that we're going to do differently on this round is we have to deal with that chain. And what we're going to do is just make one double crochet into every one of those chains. And then once you reach the other side of your chain you'll just pick back up doing your front post double crochets until you've reached the end of your round. So 
So here you can see what it looks like when we make our double crochet stitches into the chain. Now you can choose to work around the chain if you'd like. I find that in this case it's a little bit easier to work one double crochet into each chain. And you want to count, just remember how many chains you started out with. In our case here it was 21. And so I have a total of 21 double crochets. And then I want to bring it back down to our other level by making a front post double crochet just right there in that very first stitch. And we want to make this stitch a little tighter than what we normally would because we're joining the two. And if we make it really loose, you'll have a little gap there. So that really covers all of the difficult parts of this sock. Now all we need to do is just finish up the length of the foot part of the sock. So everything that's going to be on our foot about up to our ankle bone. And then we're going to change stitches, work in the woven stitch to work on the part that is the length that goes around your ankle. So I've made it back around to the end of that last round here. And now all we need to do is make a total of five more rounds where we just make one front post double crochet into every stitch. Now you might find a little bit of variability when you're working with a different size than we are here. So for this about seven to seven and a half size, five rounds is going to do the trick. If you're working on a smaller size, you're probably going to have slightly fewer rounds. If you're working on a bigger size, you'll probably have a few more rounds. Now what you want to do is just try this on as you go. And once your sock has reached about just below your ankle bone, that's where you want to stop. As I mentioned before, once we reach that level, we'll switch to our different stitch pattern and we'll finish up the length of our sock. Now, as you're working on some of these sizing adjustments, just know that this really is a pretty versatile pattern. We don't have to stick with any type of stitch multiple and that's what makes this really easy to convert to a child size or an adult size that has a larger foot than I do. So it's a really good experience for you to try to sort of figure out these things on your own and just learn how these designs come together and how you can alter the patterns to meet your needs. So what I need for you to do at this point, go ahead and pause your video, finish crocheting the last few rounds of the foot part of your sock and then come back to the video. We'll have a look at what your sock should look like and then we'll talk about how to move on to the next section. So at this point what I have done is I have crocheted all the way up until round 25 and that's where we're going to make just one more last step before we start our woven stitch pattern. So the woven stitch, if you're not familiar with it, it is a stitch that works in an even number. So we need to have an even number of stitches from this point on in order to make that stitch work. And it's a lot less complicated to worry about that throughout this part of the design and as we're working through the heel. So what we're going to do is make one more round, we're going to make one increase. And when we do that, that's going to give us an even number. So at this point, if you're working on the same size as me, we have a total of 51 stitches. We want to have a total of 52. That way we are working in a multiple of two or in an even number. So if you're working in a different size, all you're going to do is increase in the middle stitch at the heel. So somewhere back here where it's unnoticed. So exactly where it's placed, like I said, this pattern is super versatile. So it really doesn't matter if it's in the exact same place. I just try to place it somewhere here in the middle. So for us working on this size, we're gonna front post double crochet around the first 24 stitches 
and then we're going to add our increase. Then we'll just do a front post double crochet in the remaining 26 stitches. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do now. And so once you've made it all the way around to the back of your heel, this is where you're going to place your increase. So this is in our 25th stitch. Or if you're working on your own size, then you're just going to guesstimate what the middle stitch is. Or you can calculate it, whichever you prefer. Like I said, this part doesn't really matter too much. The idea is that we just want to have an even number of stitches before we move on to our woven stitch pattern. Now once you're certain you have an even number of stitches and you've confirmed that your sock does fit you, that's very important, as we move on to the last section of our sock. Now we don't need our stitch marker anymore. We're going to continue working in a spiral, but we're just going to be measuring this, the length rather than keeping track by number of rows. So since we have been working in a spiral up until this point, we have a little bit of a height difference. And we just want to compensate for that by making a slip stitch in that next stitch. That's going to pull it down to the same level and get us ready to start our woven stitch pattern. So the woven stitch is pretty different than many of the other crochet stitches. It's a combination of two stitches in one and then we skip the next and that's the reason why we have to have a multiple of two or an even number of stitches as we work this pattern. So the first part of the woven stitch we just want to yarn over, insert our hook into the stitch so for now we're going to go into that same stitch where we made our slip stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop and now we have three loops on our hook. And what we want to do is pull this first loop through this second loop. And I usually use my middle finger back here to help make that a little bit easier. just like that. Then yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops. So that's the first part. The second part we're going to yarn over again, go into the same stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and we have three loops again. Now this time we're going to pull this first loop through both of them. And that's how you make a woven stitch. So we're going to skip the next stitch and make a woven stitch right here into the next. And that will happen quite a bit. You'll see when you're working that last one, it's really easy for all of those loops just to pop right off of your hook. But you will get a rhythm down. Now skip the next stitch and wove and stitch into the next. Skip a stitch and wove and stitch. And this is our pattern repeat. We're just going to do this from now on.
Now once you've made it all the way around, I just wanted to show you where you're going to be working your woven stitches once you have a foundation of woven stitches already. So this was my first stitch here. What you want to look out for is that big open gap. See how you can see the gap here and here? That's where we're going to be working our woven stitches from here on out. And we're still skipping one just like we were before, but it's just a little bit easier if you're looking for those gaps. You can just know right away where you're supposed to be working your stitches. So all we need to do now is continue working the woven stitch in the spiral fashion until this part of our sock measures 10 inches long. So we're going to start measuring right here where we made the transition. And when it measures 10 inches long, then come back to the video, we'll talk about how to bind off and then how to deal with these ends that we have. So off camera, I went ahead and crocheted the full length of this section of my yoga sock and it measures about 10 inches from our starting point here all the way up. So once you are at that point, we just have a couple more things to finish off our yoga sock. So from here we've been working in a spiral so we have a little bit of a height difference and we just want to account for that by making a slip stitch in that next opening. So we're skipping a stitch here and then we'll just slip stitch right there and that's going to help pull that down and conceal that transition. So from here we can fasten off and then we just have a couple of ends to weave in. This one is going to be very simple. Just weave it in on the inside of your pattern. The one down here is a little bit more important since this is the top of our sock and this is what's going to be showing. We do want to account for the little transition that we have here. So we do have a little bit of a shift since we are working in a spiral. And we're going to conceal that by weaving it in. Now it's not too obvious. Yours might be a little more obvious or a little less. What we want to do is just use our tail here at the beginning to help force this little section down so that it's about the same height as the other side here. And the way I like to do that is to just turn it on the inside and then catch this ridge back here. So we don't want to go directly below it, but we just want to like shift over a little bit. And thread that in there and see as you pull that sort of pulls it down so it's at the same level and that's a little bit less of a transition. So once you have it in place then just go ahead and weave it in like normal. Now of course all that's left to do is to weave in your end from where you fastened off up here and crochet your second yoga sock. And with that this concludes our tutorial today. Now if you've enjoyed this pattern or if you've enjoyed any of my other tutorials I do ask that you push the subscribe button so you can see my other videos and also if you wouldn't mind sharing some of these projects with your friends if you feel like this is something they might like too just go ahead and share it with them and that will really help things out here at Be Hooked Crochet. It'll help more people be able to find my videos and that way they can crochet something for themselves or something special for a friend. Now on behalf of BeHookedCrochet.com, I'm your host Brittany. We'll see you in the next video.